In this tutorial, we're going to build on the material covered in the previous tutorial to see how we can enhance the regularization um, to improve the inversion of our data. So we're going to start with a forward model, as before, generate our electrode sequence, 48 electrodes, 5 meter spacing. and then we'll create our mesh and we'll add some features as before so we'll have a rectangular object here and a rectangular object to the right we'll mesh this and then we'll specify resistivity for these regions so 10 ohmmeters on the left, 1000 ohm meters on the right, and a background of 100 ohm meters. Generate our forward model as before. Let's specify an A of 2, so a 10 meter spaced potential and current dipole with n going from 1 to 8. And now I can run my forward model and I added 2% noise, so I'm going to change my offset error to 0 and run an inversion. And we will see the same kind of image that we had before. We've just used a standard regularization operator in this case. So this is running now through to the third iteration and it looks like it will converge on this iteration to a misfit of one. We'll switch off the sensitivity overlay. I'm going to change the color scale just to enhance things a little bit. So now we can see this, the, the smooth L2 norm that's used here for our regularization across the entire region. And it's an isotropic regularization that I've used here. If I go to inversion setting and select, select advanced, I've got various options in here. And one of them is my alpha anisotropy. If I specify a value of 100 rather than the default of one, and then run inversion. So this is working with exactly the same data that was generated from the forward modeling this regularization of 100 should enhance the horizontal smoothing this is illustrated in figure 5.19 in chapter 5 so we've used in this case prior knowledge to, to uh, emphasize the horizontal layering of our system. And we'll see the inversion finishes here and we see some suppression of the, of the vertical um, changes because it's, it, it, it's exaggerated some of the horizontal smoothing. Similarly, I can go to inversion settings and I can change that to 0.1. Uh, let's say 0.01. So that now means that the vertical smoothing is 100 times the horizontal smoothing. So again, this is taking, looks like three iterations to complete. And now we can see a lot more vertical exaggeration through the uh, enhancement of that, of that regularization. But 
we can also do is let's change this back to a default of one what we can also do is zone the regularization so if i go to mesh and here what i'm going to do is i'm going to make the right hand area a zone of two and the background a zone of two so this means and have the left hand region here a zone of one that means that there's going to be a disconnect between zone one and zone two so there's going to be smoothing within zone one and smoothing within zone two but not between the two zones i could have actually made this region a separate zone but i'm just going to illustrate the effect here by making one of the regions um, a, a, a different zone so now i go to inversion and I select invert this can have a dramatic effect on the on the um, inversion and we can see it already as as in the first iteration and this is illustrated in figure 5.20 in chapter 5 so I've used prior knowledge to enforce a blocking between these this left hand zone and the rest of the mesh and so we can see here that now there's a significant effect of this there is smoothing within this zone it's not that clear because there's actually the, the amount of, of variation in resistivity is minimal within that zone but by forcing that boundary, having smooth inversion within the zone, we capture the uh, feature much more accurately. The downside is that if I apply the boundary in the wrong location, then I may find that I, don't, I can't get inversion of my data.